Number 38. A spherical particle falling at terminal speed in a liquid must have the gravitational force balanced by the drag force and the buoyant force. The buoyant force is equal to the weight of the displaced fluid, while the drag force is assumed to be given by Stokes' law, uh, F sub S is equal to 6 pi R eta V. Sounds Greek to me. Uh, show that the terminal speed is given by blah, where R is the radius, density of the sphere, density of the fluid, and is the coefficient of viscosity. Okay, um, so first, uh, here's a simple picture, right? We have a spherical ball. It says it's traveling at terminal speed. So basically, the speed is constant. Okay, that's what terminal speed means. So this thing is going to be traveling downwards, you know, in this um, in this fluid, although there is no acceleration. Okay, so the acceleration is equal to zero. Now, just from that, if the acceleration is equal to zero, and we're talking about all these forces in here, right, what do we know? We know that, remember, that the sum of the forces is always equal to the mass times acceleration. If A is zero, then that means the sum of the forces have to be zero. Okay, let's keep this in mind. All right, now let's detail the forces in the picture. So there is a certain, so it tells us three forces, right? Gravitational force, it tells us uh, drag force and buoyant force. So gravitational force we know, right? That's pointing down. So the gravitational force here will be, be, be pointing directly down. So we'll call that F sub G, the force due to gravity. And it tells us in the problem that this particular force will be balanced by, and that means opposed, okay? It will be opposed by the buoyant force. So the buoyant force is pointing up. So we'll call that F sub B. And it also says that it's a, you know, balanced by the drag force. So the drag force is also pointing up. I'll just try to draw it right next to it. So I'll call that F sub D. Now, given this, the nature of this picture, right, we can now take these forces and plug it in for the sum of the forces on the left-hand side. Remember, down is negative, up is positive. So we have that the buoyant force plus the drag force will minus then the force due to gravity will equal zero. Now, it wants us to find, okay, so now let's take a step back. So we got this, great. Now, remember what they want us to solve for. They want us to solve for terminal speed, V. And V, the velocity, terminal speed, will only show up in this equation. So I know that the drag force formula here, they're using F sub S, I'm using F sub D. They're the same thing though, in terms of this problem. Um, the velocity here is only shown in the drag force. So I know that I basically need to solve this equation for drag force, meaning I gotta get all these variables on over to the right hand side. When I do that, we get this as a result, that the drag force will be equal to the force due to gravity minus the buoyant force. Okay, so now let's start working and expanding on this. Okay, I'm gonna leave the left-hand side alone for now just to simplify it for uh, a minute. I'm gonna introduce then these variables probably towards the end. Okay, let's just focus on each of these pieces. All right, so we know that the drag force here must be equal to then the force due to gravity. So how do you calculate that, right? What's force due to gravity? You know this, right? This is the mass multiplied by G. Well, what are we finding the mass of gravity, uh, excuse me, what are we finding the force, force of gravity on? We're finding the force of gravity on the spherical ball. So what does the mass have to be then? It has to be the mass of the spherical ball. So I'm just gonna put a little S down there, all right? Minus then the buoyant force. So remember, this is last chapter, all right? So the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the displaced fluid. So what is weight? Weight is a force. It's mg, again. But remember, it's the weight, excuse me, it's the, a mass of the fluid displaced. So I'll label this with a little L for whatever the liquid or fluid is, okay? Multiplied by gravity. So, so far we should be pretty good here. Now, somehow I gotta you know, get this all down to this crazy thing. So what I realize is that, right, we have density in here somehow. So I'm thinking about, well, how in the world can I get density into my equation? How's density related to either one of these? Well, density is not really related to the gravitational force, right? It's related to the mass of each object. All right, so now let's do this, okay? So now let's substitute in, so I'm gonna go up to the top here, F sub D will be equal to, remember that the density of an object is equal to the mass of that object divided by the volume of that object. So if I want to find the mass, according to this formula, it would be mass is equal to density, density multiplied by volume. So what I'm gonna do now for each of these masses is I'm gonna sub in density times volume. So we have now for the, ma for the mass, 
of the sphere, I can then write it's going to be equal to the density of that sphere times the volume of that sphere, okay? Minus then, oh, well, excuse me, times G, right? Don't forget that, all right? So I just took care of that part. Minus now the mass of the liquid. So the mass of the liquid is equivalent to the density of that liquid multiplied by the volume of that liquid multiplied by G. Okay, now let's, so now what we need to do is think about what's the relation between this volume of the liquid and this volume of the sphere? They're equal, right? Remember, this is the volume of the liquid that is displaced. And if you look in terms of the picture, right, whatever volume this sphere is taking up, it's taking up the space where water would have been. All right, so the volume of fluid that is displaced by this spherical object is equal to the volume of this object itself, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug that in now. So we have that the drag force will be equal to the density of the solid multiplied by the volume of the sphere multiplied by G minus the density of the liquid, that hasn't changed, multiplied by the volume of the sphere. What I'm saying here is that these two are equivalent. Multiply them by gravity. Okay, now to clean this up a little bit, I realize that I have some things that are in common, right? The common terms amongst these two are going to be the volume of the solid and gravity. So I'm gonna remove those two. So we have F sub D is gonna be equal to now the velocity of the sphere multiplied by gravity times now, right? The density of the solid minus the density of the liquid. Oh, look at, looky here. Look what we have there. Density of the solid minus the density of the liquid. Density of the solid minus the density of the liquid. All right, we're getting close. Now what I want to do is I want to expand on this. I want to expand on the, I mean, you could also expand on the force now, you know, the drag force, it doesn't matter. But I realize I'm going to need a little more room. So let me just shift this over a little bit if I can. All right, let me move this then. I'll move that somewhere. Okay. So now, um, okay, we'll leave that alone. So now uh, I'm going to expand on the volume of the sphere. So what is the volume of a sphere? You might have to memorize this. It's four thirds pi r cubed, right? So it's radius, radius of the sphere. So now what I'm going to do is substitute that on into my equation. So we, we have now the drag force will be equal to four thirds pi r cubed multiplied by g, then multiplied by the density of the uh, sphere minus the density of the liquid. Okay, we're starting to get closer, right? We got all this stuff coming, right? We got the radius now and all this. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna expand on the force of drag by substituting this on into my equation, okay? So now we're gonna plug in, so this is now going to be uh, six pi, the radius of, this, of the sphere, okay? That's what that R represents, multiplied then by the density, uh, not the density, what am I talking about? The viscosity of the liquid, all right? Uh, multiplied then by V. And that's now going to be equal to four thirds pi r cubed times G times then the density of the sphere minus the density of the liquid. Okay, now we can start canceling some terms, right? You got pi on both sides and they're both in the numerator, so that goes bye bye. You have a radius here and you had three radii here, so get rid of one of them. Now you also have a six over here and you have a four in the numerator, so you can reduce that two if you wanted. Six can reduce down to a three and the four you can reduce down to a two. And that's it, that's all you can now reduce. Now remember, we're solving for this, we're solving for V. So solving this thing for V, I then have to divide out essentially three and the uh, viscosity, correct? So now this will work out to be that V will be equal to two, so how, how do, so let's, let's do it this way, okay? Essentially this three will come down and multiply with this three, as well as this viscosity will also move down into the denominator, okay? So what's gonna happen now is we're gonna have two over nine, all right, times then r squared, r squared times g, and this is now over, if you wanted to put this over, it doesn't matter how you organize it, but this is over then the uh, viscosity. And that will then be multiplied now by density sub S minus density sub L. And here it is, look, 
this is it, right? I'm just gonna reorganize this a little bit just so that it matches. So this is two R squared times G all over uh, nine times the viscosity times then density sub S minus density sub L. And there it is, all right? I use lowercase r, they use uppercase, whatever. Just substitute it if you want. All right, so uh, that's it. That's how we go about it. We start from a set of simple, right? Very, very simple, uh, a very simple premise, and then we expand from there, all right? I always want you to think that way amongst these problems. Start simple, try to find the, the underlying factor that is important in the question and usually it's they're very simple ideas usually not all the time but usually it's conservation of energy right energy in equals energy out here we realize that terminal speed means no acceleration and the sum of the forces are zero very very simple idea from that simple idea you reason on up okay always try to build that way and that should hopefully increase uh, your problem solving ability Guys, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it very much. Hopefully you can subscribe. And if you can't, hit the button anyway. Thank you.